Hey friends, this is Quest and Current speaking and today I wanted to talk to you about USB voltage, current and power ratings. So to get you into the topic and why I'm explaining this, I wanted to show you this USB power bank I have. It features a USB-A, a USB-C and a micro USB connector on the top and specifies different current capabilities for all three of them. So it has an USB-C input current of 2.4 amps max, a micro USB input current of 2.1 amps, a DC output of 3.1 amps, and as you can see, none of this is actually specified um, within the USB specifications. It is similar with this wall outlet that, if I get it to focus, specifies 5 volts at 3.4 amps maximum output current cap capability for those two um, USB-A connectors. So, if we take a look at the USB standard, we start with USB 1.0 or 1.1, which has been released in 1996 um, and has been brought up in 1995. So, that's like 28 years ago um, from now. And back in the day, it specified a USB device to draw a current of a maximum 500 milliamps. And that was actually already considered a high current device because low current devices like mouses and keyboards were supposed to be um, below 100 milliamps. Um, the 500 milliamp current rating at 5 volts voltage brings us to a power of 2.5 volts maximum. So what I've just shown you is a lot more because regular USB chargers nowadays have like 3 amps or 2 amps, 2.5 amps, something around that in the ballpark. So how do they actually do that? Um, to know how they do that, I've, I've brought one of those really cheap um, USB-A to micro USB cables, which I will connect um, to those headphones that I've bought a while ago and you can see that they're already quite worn down. And if I connect it to the headphones, and to the power bank, you can see that the LEDs start lighting um, on both devices and they will start charging and they will start drawing current. But how does this device know how much current can actually be drawn from this power bank? So how do they talk to each other? Um, for this, we take a look at the USB pinout and the USB connector itself. So I've stripped a connector, um, a micro USB connector, like this, and you can see that there are four wires inside. So the four wires shown here um, is missing the fourth pin on the, the micro USB connector because th this one is actually not used in any devices I've ever seen in my life. So all of them use um, either those four or two of the connections. Um, the two thicker ones, the red and the brown one, uh, it's obviously going to be VCC and ground. And the two thinner ones, the white and green one, are going to be the data lines. But for the really cheap cables, like the one I've shown you before, like this, you can already see that there's not going to be four wires inside the cable. So the really cheap cables only have the VCC and the ground connections. So they're only going to be able to, to say there is a voltage or there is no voltage. For that reason, devices started to um, find out how much current they could draw by just drawing the current and then taking a look at the voltage. And generally speaking, if you have um, a normal power supply like this, this wall ward, the voltage will slack in depending on the current that is drawn from it. So it will start with a bit over 5 volts, like 5.1 or 5.15 volts. And the second you start drawing current from it, the, the voltage on the second um, end of our supply will, will decrease. So if we say we connect this cable to here, and here we start with 5.1 volts, and we start drawing current from here, the internal resistance of the wire and the internal resistance of the power supply is going to decrease the voltage that is measured at this point. And this device will increase the current that it draws from the power supply until it sees a voltage that it considers reasonable to, to be in line with, with some kind of load factor that the uh, manufacturer has deemed sufficient. So 
what they're actually doing is they're overloading the cable because like I said, the USB voltage and current um, for a normal device is only allowed to be 500 milliamps um, unless you have some special device with a USB-C connector or some battery charging capabilities where you can go up to 1.5 amps. But 3.1 amps is, is, is never in the standard. It, it only appears down here and you already need power delivery capabilities. So because this is a problem and, and um, manufacturers have done it in weird ways for, for years and years um, without an end, the USB-C connector features um, methods to, to circumvent this. So if you take a look at a regular USB-C connector, and I hope, yeah, you can see inside, there are 24 pins um, all around the, the USB-C connector itself. Um, so if I connect it in like this, what you can see is you have got A1 to A12 and B1 to B12 connectors. So the USB-C connector itself has besides the, the usual USB 2.0 interface or 1.1 if you're having a really old device um, and the USB 3 or 4 with those high data speed paths um, and the, the power itself, some CC1 and CC2 pin, CC2 and CC1 pin, um, which they define as block configuration detection. And those pins are used to negotiate the power and the device is actually allowed to draw. Um, so we are now talking about those USB-C to USB-C cables. Um, they have those internal connections and actually all of them need to have them. So if you have a tester at hand that, that can test what, what cable you, you are actually holding in your hand, then you know if you're having a legitimate cable or a, a fake knockoff and your device anyways won't, won't start charging. Um, so what they're actually doing inside the cable, you can see here, they are using the CC wire in the cable. So the cable is everything that is between those two um, dotted lines. They are using one of the two wires to A, detect um, if a device has been connected and B, if the, the connector is flipped um, on one side or the other. Because the USB-C connector can be plugged in one or the other way, you can actually detect if it's in like this or like this by taking a look at the CC wire inside the cable. And what they've now agreed on is there are two um, ter terminologies, terminologies the downstream facing port and the upstream facing port called DFP and UFP. The downstream facing port is always the port supplying power and the upstream facing port is always the port needing power or receiving power. And they solved that really easily by taking two resistors and the device or the port actually supplying power, the downstream facing port will have two resistors pulling the CC pins up to, to its voltage rail, to the VCC pin. Um, in this case, it's five volts. And the upstream facing port is pulling the resistors down um, to ground. And therefore, you know that this device can supply power to this. And if you accidentally connect two upstream facing ports together, then both of them will be grounded. And if you connect two downstream facing ports together, then both of them will um, be pulled to, to VCC. Nothing will happen, but also nothing will be charged. And in order to know what different currents and current capabilities those downstream facing ports feature, for example, this power bank that comes with a rating of um, 2.4 amps for charging and 3.1 amps for discharging, they have um, those pull-up resistors um, specified as the default USB power, um, which is still 500 milliamps, to be 56K. So both of these will be 56 kilo ohms if um, the downstream facing port is capable of handling 500 milliamps. It will be 22 kilo ohms if it can do 1.5 amps and 10 kilo ohm if it will be 3.0 amps. The same can be realized by implementing instead of the resistors a current source um, or if you don't want to pull them to 5 volts but instead to 3.3 volts you have different resistor values. The same on the other end for the upstream facing device we have nominal value resistors of 5.1 kilo ohm, um, and that's pretty much standard and defined because the nominal value of your voltage will be 1.1 volt in the end, hopefully. 
Um, this worked really well for a while. So if you take a look at not this sheet, but this sheet, you can see that if we take a look here, we have the type C USB 1.5 amps and 3 amps current capabilities still at 5 volts um, voltage to be 7.5 or 15 watts. So with these configurations of pull up and pull down resistors, we can already draw 15 watts of power from the device. But after a while we found out that this is still not enough. And that's why there is USB power delivery, what we call it, which can go up to 20 volts at 5 amps, maximum 100 watts. And there actually even already is an USB power delivery extension or extended um, range, which can deliver more than 100 watts. I think it's 200 or 260 watts of total power um, that can be drawn from the device. But as you know, the USB-C connector is the most recent connector. So that's it, there, there is no USB-E connector or USB-F connector yet at least. So how do they actually do that to not only advertise the current capabilities, but also increase the voltage capabilities um, up to 20 volts or 12 volts? So what they actually do is they're still using the USB-C -C pins um, for no negotiations. But here we have the same image as before, just, just plotted a bit differently. Um, the upstream facing port has the pull down resistors, the downstream facing port has the pull up resistors, but the cable in the middle, which is again in between here, is now called electronically marked cable. And it internally has some pull down resistors and it internally uses both CC pins, not one, but both, to advertise its current capabilities and its voltage capabilities. But you cannot advertise a lot with that. So what you actually want to do, and now it's getting really interesting, is want to use an active cable. And here we can see the active cable again, in the middle here, where you already have the upstream facing port identically, but the downstream facing port internally switched um, from CC1 and CC2 to different levels. It will always start with the pull-up resistors here and the pull-down resistors here, but it can, after negotiating something different, connect the CC pins to something else, to something different, to um, VCCon, for example. So what the cable, now the active cable, is actually doing, um, it has an uh, active cable IC. So it has a microcontroller inside, which, while drawing power from um, either the left or the right hand side. Now it's going to draw power from here over the CC2 pin via this freewheeling diode and the pull down resistor to let the device know that it's an active cable. It's going to power this active cable IC. And now, after having negotiated that this is the power supply pin, the CC2 is now called Wecon pin um, and will be connected to Wecon over this switch. The CC1 pin is called CC wire. And what the CC wire does is that this active cable I see will connect itself like this to this wire. And now either the downstream facing port or the upstream facing port can talk to this IC and they can actually ask the cable itself what its current and voltage capabilities are. Um, it can also ask it how long it is, or if it's an active or passive cable, if there's a repeater inside, for example, or if it's some, some completely different stuff. And every manufacturer should have an ID, and every ID should, should be comprised of the manufacturer ID and the device ID. But generally speaking, this is the newest version of, of power capabilities. Um, so only after both devices have agreed on a voltage and a current rating and the cable has advertised itself as being capable of actually supplying this voltage and this current. It is allowed to be switched to higher voltage and higher current um, by the downstream facing port. And this is how we get into the really interesting high current and high voltage range of 5 amps, 20 volts or even above that if we are going into the newer development. So. I'm not showing you today how the CC pins and how this power delivery standard and the transmission is actually wor working because the video is already getting quite long. But, you know, it should be interesting and it should get you going and, and knowing what, what is actually up there. 
And if I ever have the time in the future, then you will see a video about that. And in the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, just let me know down below. And yeah, have a nice weekend.